Hey everyone, in this video, in this episode, we'll be going through whether the RBA will now increase interest rates or whether the APRA, the Australian Prudential Regulatory Authority, will clamp down on lending, creating a credit squeeze, which will then slow down property prices. If you think property prices are going out of control and wondering whether the banks and regulators will cause them to cool down. We'll be going through some charts and graphs that will explain what is likely to happen. So my name's PK and I help people build passive income through buying properties without using a $15,000 buyer's agent, but with using data. And if you get value out of my channel if you get value out of this video i'm genuinely so grateful to you guys each and every one of you thank you so much for being part of this community hit the like button hit the subscribe button turn the notification bell on and let's make this a larger and larger community okay let's get going so the first chart what you see in front of you, what you see here is monthly, and by the way, this is all core logic data, monthly value of new finance commitments. All right, so I've explained in a previous video how new finance commitments, or you could in some respects say pre approvals, what they are a leading indicator of what property prices will do. Right, so what you're seeing is that owner occupies this light blue line, increase, 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 and this boom has really been created by owner occupiers. You can see here since 2020, 2021, this blue line has skyrocketed up. Now, a little bit delayed and a little bit softer, the investor housing finance commitments have also increased, but not to such a large extent. Now, the really interesting chart is here on the right the portion of new lending for investment housing. So of all lending, what is the percentage or proportion that originates or finds its genesis from investors? Now, here's the answer to the question about this video, or at least part of the answer. Last time, APRA, who are the Australian Prudential Regulatory Authority, their role is to make sure the Australian banking system is strong. In the last boom, which was around 2015 to 2016, you could say, almost 17, what they found was that the banking system systemically was starting to become more vulnerable because banks were lending so much money to investors. You could see here, right in the thick of the boom, 45% of all loans were to investors. And the last boom that came down went up again, back up to 40%. And so this is where they added to speed bumps. The first speed bump they said was you cannot increase your investor lending year on year by 10%. The second speed bump after the first one didn't really work that well was to say that of all loans, no more than 30% can be to investors. And so therefore that came right back down and was one of the contributing factors towards cooling the property market. Now you can see since the last boom in 2017, this chart, this investor lending proportion has just nosedived and now it's coming up. Now granted, this data is only up to June. We don't have more recent data yet, so it's a little bit lagging. But what it's telling us is that we are nowhere near the previous high. So although the International Monetary Fund guy is coming out and saying that the Australian housing market is weak at the knees, although I think his name is Matt Corbin, the CEO of CBA, is saying that you know banks need to be super careful about lending to investors. You know, all of this is largely media hype. You know, these things, these comments actually happen all the time. It's just right now our media is latching onto them because they need some clickbait. The data suggests that we are still so far away from the potentially, not crippling, but potentially um, more vulnerable banking system than, you know, than we are now. We're so far away from that. Right now, investor lending is still under 30%. If APRA, whose job it is not to cool house prices, which they've said very clearly, if APRA 
is to step in, it has to be at least above this 35% mark for true data to suggest that, hang on guys, there's too much speculation in the market. Investors are in control. They're driving prices up. Up until this point, it was largely owner occupiers, which is, I've said many times, more sustainable because they actually live in the place. Investors don't live in the place, right? That's the first thing I wanted to talk about APRA. The second um, chart that I want to share with you all is this one right here. What about the RBA? So even if APRA doesn't intervene, what about the RBA? What is the Reserve Bank of Australia going to do? And what will be the implication on house prices? Guys, if you're getting value, hit the subscribe button, turn the notification bell on and give it a like. But let's go into this. So I remember, I don't know how many of you guys remember, but 2006, 2007, 2008 was a great time for property investors. Markets were booming, you know, that was basically the biggest boom before the 2015 boom. It was just before the GFC leading up to 2008. And you could see here interest rates were huge. Just, just massive. I mean, they were small compared to what interest rates have been in, you know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, up at 16, 17, 18 percent. But here still 7.25, very strong. Now, and then GFC happened. So the RBA had to inject a lot of stimulus through monetary policy, brought interest rates right back down. We thought we were out of it, but hang on, we actually weren't. And they had to come down again. A lot of humiliation for the RBA around here. The European crisis, Italy, Greece, a lot of them folded around this part. The world thought it was out of the GFC. Actually, it wasn't. Let's take the interest rates back down. Now, remember the last boom around 2015-ish, interest rates were 2.5%. Now they are 0.1%. So two or three takeaways from here. The first thing, there was a boom back here. There was a boom here. Both times, interest rates were much, much, much higher than what they were now. So even if the RBA increases interest rates, even if they increase them by 2% in the next two years, which, by the way, they very, very, very categorically and repeatedly again and again and again said they will not do, they will not touch interest rates until 2024. But let's say they're just you're making political moves and they actually will. Even if they increase interest rates, keep in mind that property markets were booming back here and back here. So the absolute amount of interest rate or official cash rate has no bearing or has no um, correlation to capital growth or to property price growth, right? Because they were much bigger back here and property markets were booming. That's the first thing I want to say. The second thing I want to say is that here they acted before they should have had they not increased interest rates up here then the australian economy would have fared much much better through 2011 12 13 which if you can remember weren't great days for the australian economy right so the last thing this the rba wants to do is prematurely again increase interest rates only to then have them brought back down again. Only this time, they can't bring them back down too much because there's nowhere further to go, right? Here, they were still at 3%, brought it up to 47 They had another 4.75% to take it down. Here, if they go up 0.5% or 1%, they can't bring it down below 0.1% anymore. They can't go into negative interest rate territory. I mean, they can, but it's very unlikely. It's very humiliating for a central bank to, to have to do that. And so they will kick the can down the road as much as possible to avoid prematurely increasing interest rates because that will be very humiliating from an economic and custodian perspective. That's the second thing I want to say. And the third thing I want to say is that right now the banks, as they have been for a long time, are assessing your ability to get a loan based on at least a 2% buffer. So right now they're not assessing you whether you can assess get a loan based on today's rate. They're addressing it or assessing it as if you were magically or mythically paying 2 or 3% higher. So even if interest rates go up 2% or 3% in the next year or two, which, by the way, they won't because the RBA said they won't, Still, there's not going to be an affordability problem in the Australian housing market by and large because there's buffers. And that's why APRA has such, done such a good job previously 
<clears throat> to create these capital requirements to make sure the Australian banking system is insulated and the Australian property market is well protected. <clears throat> Okay, so guys, tell me though in the comments below whether you think interest rates will go up in the next one or two years. If you do, leave a yes below. <clears throat> if you think they will not go up in the next two years, leave a no below. Like everyone is kind of fear mongering and saying interest rates are going to go up. But let's just see what this community thinks. If you think they they will go up, leave a yes. If you think they will not go up in the next two years, leave a no. But the last slide I want to take you through is this one right here. Everyone knows that the official cash rate, this one right here, is divorced from the real interest rates that banks actually charge. As you can see right now, the official cash rate is 0.1%, whereas the real interest rates are generally around 2, 2.5%, right? 25 to, to sort of 3%. And this is what they have been doing. Once again, all call logic data here. This is what they've been doing over the last few years. They've been coming down. So there is no doubt in my mind that when interest rates start increasing um, from the banks, agnostic to what the RBA is doing, there will be some softening of the property market, right? I'm, I'm not here to spook the property market to no end. When interest rates start going up, when this trend reverses, definitely property markets will not boom as much as they are doing right now. But keep in mind that property markets don't just go up and down. There's middle grounds as well. So just like um, this is coming down, that will start going up at some point. That means the rate of growth of the property market will start slowing down. That doesn't mean they will fall. It means that the rate of growth will start slowing down. So if you're wondering whether you should park your money and wait to invest in a year's time or two years time because it'll be a cooler market, easier to buy, more opportunities. That's just, uh, that logic is a bit folly because even if the property market doesn't boom for the next two years, it will still continue to rise, albeit at a slower amount. So that 350K property that you could have bought today, it will still be more than 350k in a year or six months or two years. That million dollar property will still be more than a million dollars. So this logic of waiting for a cooler market, yes, the market may be cooler, but that's just relative compared to the current status quo. It will still be rising. You'll still be paying more for the same property in the future than you are today. So hopefully that, that helped, guys. Tell me if it did. Leave a subscribe. Turn notification bell on. Hit a thumbs up. Guys, in the comments, tell me if you think interest rates are going to rise in the next two years. The official cash rate, that is. Leave a yes or no below. But, you know, my take from all of this is that property markets are remarkably sound. Yes, APRA will come in at some point, but it's not until investor lending increases a whole lot more than it is what it is right now. Banks will raise interest rates, but not in the foreseeable future to a material effect. And even if they do, we're well insulated because there are buffers in place. Guys, that's my thoughts on interest rates and whether there will be a credit squeeze. I don't think there will be any time soon. I think property prices will continue to run along. Guys, if you got value out of this, share it. And always, always, always remember the most important real estate is between your two ears. So that is where you need to be investing your money, not outsourcing it to a buyer's agent. My name is PK. And I genuinely, genuinely hope that you get the best out of this run in this property market. And there's links below to my podcast, to my 10,000 member Facebook group, if you want to really step up your learning. Take it easy. Bye.